Hey there, it's Dr. Kamisa. Welcome back to our video series. And today we're on the lab side of the office and we're introducing for the first time some new technology uh, called Shockwave. It's Manugan. Yeah, wait till you see. Wait till you hear about this. So today, this is Shockwave therapy. I'm going to explain how the instrument actually works and... Uh, and why we're so excited about this. So stay tuned to us. If you're new to our channel, please subscribe to us. Please turn on your little bell notifications, like us, uh, share us with your friends, share us with your family, share us with people you don't like. <laughs> Just share us. That's all I'm asking. Just share us. All right, stay tuned. Hey there, it's Dr. Kamisa. Welcome back to our video series. And today, I'm super excited to share with you some brand new technology for Ultimate Medical Group. And it's uh, brought to us, uh, manufactured by Storz Medical. That's S-T-O-R-Z Medical. And if you're north of the border, that'd be a Z. It'd be S-T-O-R-Z. That's where I'm from, is the Z side of things, but I've learned how to say Z. So, uh, just a little humor there, but uh, Storz Medical, a premier medical uh, manufacturer of sophisticated uh, surgical equipment, medical equipment uh, globally. Uh, this is an FDA approved device used extensively in Europe by orthopedics, and we are super excited to bring it to Ultimate Medical Group so that we can empower people to have better outcomes. It's just, so um, we're just super excited about this. So what, what I'm gonna do today is break this down into little segments and, and explain how this technology works and why we're so excited and what does it really do. All right, so I wanna try and explain the equipment here. So the there's really three parts to this uh, shockwave system. We have the tablet, which you can see on the computer here, which records all the information about the treatment. We have uh, in my hand here is the wand, which we have controls here as well. We have the transmitter, which is the tip. And then we have the main base here, which is the brains behind the entire system, but it's also uh, housing an air compressor and the air compressor is tied or runs from the back of the unit here through a tube to this wand and so what happens is that as we change or as we pull up different conditions it's going to generate a certain amount of pressure with the air with the uh, with the air compressor no different if you're um, if you have a little air compressor at home and you want to do like a from a nailer right if you want to create a lot of force you have to crank up that dial that tells you how many pounds of pressure you actually have right to use a, a nailer versus if you just want to blow up your tires on your bike or something or on the car you don't need that much pressure so you can turn down the dial so as you turn down the dial on your compressor at home, that's kind of what we can do here as well. I can either manu I can either do it here on the wand itself, or I can do it on the computer itself. So we have a way of actually uh, controlling how much pressure, how much air pressure is actually traveling through this tube. But why do we have air traveling through this tube? I'm going to explain that to you. Okay, so we have air going through this tube. And inside the wand here, inside this portion right here, and you can see this in a cutout picture uh, on the video here, but as you, as, when you look at this 
wand in here, there is, uh, I'm gonna take this apart. So uh, this is the tip I'm unscrewing right now is called the, the transmitter. This would actually attaches uh, obviously to the wand and makes contact with your skin, okay? Then inside here is a little metal projectile, like a little bullet that travels back and forth inside here. So I'm going to take this apart so you can see that. It's pretty cool, actually. So I have a 22 millimeter wrench. I'm going to just undo this. So inside here, that's what's inside there. So, and when I, there's a little, when I talk about that little metal projectile, that little bullet, that's how, let's see if you can see that on the camera there. That's how tiny that is, right? It's maybe just about an inch long or so. And so that little metal bullet goes inside this tube here. And so if I drop the bullet inside the tube, and then what happens is that has, when this is screwed into the, actually into the wand itself, the air is coming in this open tube here. Air is coming in this tube, and that little metal uh, projectile is moving back and forth, so a frequency, moving back and forth at a set frequency. And that's what we can control on the computer itself or on the wand itself. We can control the frequency. We also can control the intensity. And so every time, and then if we take a look at this, so here's the inside of it. So that metal projectile's inside here. And when it's making contact with the transmitter here, that bullet's traveling down here, hitting the tip, which is creating this wave of energy, right? So that's what this is. It's a shock wave. It's called shock wave, radio wave. There's different types. There's a radio shock wave. There's focus shock waves. This is actually radio uh, shock waves. But that little metal projectile is traveling down, hitting the transmitter, which is going to be hitting our skin. And that shock wave or the energy is in traveling into the tissue and we can control the depth of the penetration of the energy by changing out the tips. So we have intensity, we have frequency, and we have the depth of which the energy is going into the tissue. And when we do that, we can affect different tissues and different responses. So what actually happens, it's called me me mechanotransduction, is the fancy word for it, but we're actually creating this wave of energy that causes this cascade of cellular and biological changes that take place inside your body inside the tissue itself and so I'm just gonna put this back inside and it's very simple to do I'm gonna just unscrew the transmitter and we're just gonna put this oops the, my little projectile so there's the again there's the little metal guy it's gonna go in there like that I'm just gonna screw this back in I'm going to tighten it with my little metric. It's metric. It's from Europe. It's 22 millimeters. And put my transmitter back on. So basically, as I'm working, let's say I'm working on an elbow. We can work on any body part. Spine, cervical from your neck, shoulders, elbow, wrist, fingers, cervical spine, thoracic spine, lumbar spine, hips, knees, every joint, ankles, everything. We can work on everything. And um, so what actually happens is that every time that little projectile hits the transmitter, it creates a pulse. And so 
the computer is recording the frequency, the intensity, the, uh, and how many pulses or how many times that energy is striking the tissue, okay? And so um, when that takes place, the energy that's traveling through the tissue actually creates a whole, like I said, a cascade of cellular change, and I'll explain that in a second. So we know that the air is traveling through this tube, hitting the metal projectile, causing it to hit the tip, which is causing a pulse that go into our, our tissue. And by changing the frequency and the intensity of that uh, air compression and changing of the tip, we can essentially affect how deep and how powerful that, that energy or that shock wave is actually gonna be to the tissue. And so when we do that, we stimulate what is called uh, it's mechanical transduction where we're taking energy from a device, putting it into our tissue, and letting the body respond to it. So we're using the body's naturally healing properties. And the major thing that takes place is that we're stimulating the mitochondria, which stimulates ATP production for energy. And the APT, uh, sorry, ATP production is what allows the cell and allows the body to regenerate, to heal itself. And so when someone, when, when something is dead, like you see a dead animal on the side of the road and they're like this, uh, in rigor mortis, maybe you heard that term before, but that ATP production has been stopped. There's no more energy traveling through the body. And so what happens is that when we stimulate the mitochondria and, and for ATP production, there's lots of different cellular changes that take place. And so, I didn't want to get into too much of the chemical or the biological, like actual, you can go into PubMed, you could drive yourself crazy by looking at all the cellular changes that take place. I wanted to break it down so patients would say, well, that's nice, but what's it gonna do for me? How's this gonna help me, right? So the first thing it does, it creates, with respect to blood supply, it creates new blood supply. It's called neurovascularization. It's creating brand new blood supply. It's improving the existing blood supply, which is called angiogenesis, right? So from the blood supply, we're, we're getting new blood supply and improving the blood supply that's already there. And blood supply is critical for healing. We, everything is based on blood supply, right? The second thing that it, so that's the first thing. The second thing that it does is that it stimulates, redu it, it, because of the stimulation of the energy, it reduces a substance P, or it stimulates and reduces the uh, pain stimulators. So it's pain reduction by decreasing these different chemicals that cause pain in our body. The third thing that it does, the third thing it does is anti-inflammatory. It has an anti-inflammatory effect by decreasing the inflammation, okay? It also will, because of the growth factors that get stimulated with this, it's going to regenerate, start the regeneration process for both the muscle and the nerve tissue. And that's through growth uh, factors that get stimulated from this. And the last thing that it does, and not the last thing, but the last major thing that it does is improved wound healing. So we have these, so if we, if we think about it again, why would someone, so if someone says they got a rotator cuff tear and it's not quite large enough uh, for a stem cell uh, injection, it's not quite large enough for uh, it doesn't need the horsepower of a PRP injection, platelet-rich plasma. So we could actually do repair the shoulder with the shock wave. The treatments are done once a week, every five to seven days, depending on the condition, but typically it's five to seven days for a series of six treatments. So that's the protocol that has been researched extensively in Europe is that five to seven days, and it's about once a week uh, over, so we, that's what we say once a week, 
and we do that over a period of six weeks. So by six sessions, the tissue should be uh, resolved and depending on the condition of what we started with, a dramatic improvement in pain, function, mobility, um, strength, and stability. So when we think about the shock wave, and where does it fit into our protocol? Well, let's say, for example, if we're doing, um, obviously we can do the adjustments, we can do the rehab stuff, and maybe it's just not responding because the tissue has got too much scar tissue. There's, there's an old tear in there, whether it's a rotator cuff or whether it's um, uh, uh, you sprained your knee or it's your lumbar spine or your neck, right? It doesn't really matter what it is, but maybe through the adjustments we can get it to a certain point, but now we need to get it to the next level and it's not quite severe enough to uh, warrant uh, a full, complete, extensive uh, stem cell rejuvenation, stem cell therapy, where we harvest the bone marrow from your hip and we process that in the lab and that's what gets done in, these, in this room here. So this is our first line of defense in the regenerative side. So yes, we can get your spine to move better with the adjustments, obviously we can change your spine, we can do corrective care with your spine, we can do corrective care with your posture, but when tissues need to be healed because they've been damaged, that's where this comes in. And uh, it has been initially, the response we have been getting has been fantastic, and we're very excited about it, and I think we're gonna bring our level of care to another level. We just keep raising the bar because, like I say, we're empowering people to live their best day every day, and we've got to find the tools to help us do that. So until next time, like our videos, share our videos, stay tuned because we're going to go through um, different conditions with this and with the shockwave therapy. So stay tuned. Until next time, have a fantastic day. God bless you.